he was doing the job, I wouldn't even be doing this. I'd be at some beautiful place with the gorgeous ocean, the Mediterranean. Look, they're all pointing. The Atlantic, maybe the Pacific. Yeah. Yeah, someone's on top of the roof. Look. There he is right there. Right there, see him? He's laying down, see him? Yeah, he's laying down. And so I'm here with you fighting my tail to get a center. What's happening? And the next year we'll take back the White House yeah. because if we do, we're going to make America better than ever before. We're going to make it. Yeah, look. And there he is. Because we have millions and millions Officer. of people in our country that shouldn't be here. Dangerous people. Criminals. We have criminals. We have criminals. He's we on have the roof. He's right here. We have people that right should here. not be here. Right on the roof. And it's much He's tougher than now. It. No, watch this shit, dude. Watch, watch. She sits down. Yep. Watch this. If you puts the sign up. Take a look what happened. She's completely normal. And then watch. And then she's got What the fuck? What the fuck? People are freaking out. And she's filming. And she's just like right there. She's not even freaking the fuck out. What the fuck? Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good. Happy Monday. So you guys just got done seeing those two quick videos. So a lot of things are coming out about this Donald Trump shooting that's not sitting well with a lot of us. And so yesterday I did a call-in show. Um, if you guys don't know, I have my own app. It's the lovely TTV app. You can download it on the Android store or the iPhone store. And basically in the app, there's a chat feature, kind of like the Spotify green room, kind of like Clubhouse. So I did a show yesterday and I just want to thank everybody who called in, everybody who participated in the chat. It was a really good dialogue. So I'm going to post a snippet of some of the things that we talked about yesterday. But to catch the full show, you have to go onto my Spotify platform. The links will be posted down below. So make sure you guys check out the full dialogue. It was very interesting hearing everybody's different point of views from different points of the spectrum. So once again, I appreciate everybody who called in and tuned in yesterday. And if you don't have the app, make sure you guys download it as soon as possible. Because we're going to start doing weekly call-in shows again, like we were doing for the past two years. We had to go on hiatus until the app was finished. Everything is now done and working. So definitely tune in and you will be notified by the app when we have these conversations. So, so if you want to join in, in the conversation, make sure you download the Lovely Tea TV app. So without further ado, here's a snippet from Sunday's conversation. And once again, to listen to the full dialogue, go on to my Spotify page. Talk to you guys later. Deuces. If you're here to enjoy the tea, then feel free to chat with me. Come on and talk to me. I really want to know what you Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing good today. I swear I have not heard that song in so long. <laughs> so it is a lot going on. And I know a lot of people are asking to do a green room show. Like we haven't done one. We've been wanting to do an official, um, you know, comeback. We did the test run a few weeks ago. So I felt like this was the perfect topic um, to do the show in and to have people call in. Um, if you guys don't know, there's also a chat session. So you guys can click the chat at the bottom and there's people in the chat talking as well. So I'll be also responding to people in the chat. If you want to speak, just raise your hand. It is a lot going on. So as of today, yesterday, we didn't have as much information when I went live, but today we finally have a picture of the shooter. And I'm sorry that the shooter once again looks AI generated. Um, there's a young man that said that he went to school with the shooter and that the shooter was allegedly bullied. Yeah, he was bullied almost every day. In what way, can you explain? Um, I mean, he would sit alone at lunch. I mean, he was just an outcast, and you know how kids are nowadays, so they're gonna see someone like that, and they're gonna target him because they think it's funny or whatever, so it's the best way I can describe it. And it's honestly kind of sad. Like, I don't wanna say this is what 
provoked it, but you never know. You know, typical story. He was a loner. He was bullied. He didn't have nice clothes and things like that. But what I also find very interesting is I was doing research on him this morning. There's not a lot of information on the shooter at all. Like he doesn't have a social media footprint. He doesn't have an Instagram. Now, this is somebody who's 20. And most people in their 20s, they live their life on social media. Maybe not like they're every week in life, but they at least have like a Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. This young man has none of that. So I find that very interesting as well. Um, but like I said, the classmate was saying that he was bullied. So it's going to be, it's just going to be very interesting to see like how much stuff starts coming out about him. I know they said that the secret services went to his home. And so right now they're searching his home and stuff like that. Um, the media was also saying that, remember when I played the clip, the guy was telling Secret Service, like, there's somebody up there. Now more information is saying that he got up there just using a ladder. So he put a ladder up there, climbed up there. And so they did not secure the premises as well as they thought they should have. They said whenever you go to these political rallies, because I've never been to one, I'm just, you know, it's just not my thing. But they said when you go to these political rallies, like when you're going inside, even though he does a lot of outdoor ones, you are searched thoroughly. It's almost like TSA. They're searching bags, pat downs, metal detectors. So they're doing all of that stuff. But for some reason, they didn't think to, you know, clear and secure any rooftop. Me and my oldest were having a conversation this morning. And he says, usually when any like presidential figures come into town, right? And like, let's say they go like to a downtown area. A lot of times they'll either um, empty a lot of those buildings. So even if it's like an apartment building, they'll have a lot of people leave their apartments or they'll put up, um, what do you say? Like thick, I don't know, some type of like blinds or, you know, drapery where it is secure, where you cannot shoot downward at like the motor cage. So they take a lot of like precautions. So for them to miss that spot, which was a perfect angle to where the stage was when you look at the pictures of where the man shot from and the stage and where Secret Service was, it was a perfect shot. So I don't understand why the snipers would not think to like secure that area and to, you know, mark that area off. So a lot of people are saying that they feel like it was an inside job, maybe Secret Service, you know, you know, had played a hand in it. You know, I don't know. I don't want to run with a lot of different conspiracies, but it is very unnerving because again, if he's not safe as the ex-president, what does that mean for just your average American? Have you guys seen um, the Illuminati card game? No, I have not seen that. Okay, I'm gonna, it's on eBay. Let me see if I can post a picture in the chat. But the card came out in 1996. Mm -hmm. If you look at the face on the card, it looks like Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. and it has like a, like a, I don't want to call it a bullet, but it's mm -hmm. something marking by the face, almost like it's whizzing past the ear. And it's says, right, right, you know, right. And it did in the Bible, it did say that like, it, like part of his head was wounded and then it healed. So mm -hmm. that, my mind just went right there. I just posted in the chat. It's it's very eerie how a lot of the things that we're going through. That's why I say sometimes I feel like the world is a stage, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of the stuff that we're going through right now in modern times, we can find in the Bible, mm -hmm. the Illuminati card game, the mm -hmm. predictive programming of the Simpsons. Mm -hmm. It's an, it's that's where it makes you feel like you don't even know what to think anymore. Yeah, and it's very scary, really. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say and like to bring that point up. But I just want to say I'm a big fan. I've been in rocking with you since like long, 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 long. I'm very, I was very nervous talking, but I just wanted to get my point out there. And I love you. You deserve all your flowers. You're amazing. And just you inspired me to just look at things differently and to like open my perspective on certain topics. And I just want to commend you on that. And on the other side of that, half y'all not going to like me, but I'm still love y'all. And I say this because I don't have any feelings for Trump. 
and I and I'm tired of extending grace to people when they say, you know, he's not a good guy and things happen, but should no one should be murdered. I absolutely agree. Mm-hmm. Where I have the issue is, is where is all of that thought when we're dealing with it? Because we can't go to the movies. I'm terrified to send my children to school. You really don't have no rights as a black person. They are quick to let you know that. And MAGA people have no fear. And when I say MAGA people, that doesn't mean a color because we have black, Latino. It's an ideology. So Trump already said, "Uh, I'm going to do me. And let's not forget, he said, get my shoes. He got got shot and said, get my shoes, girl. Grab my purse. Grab my things. I'm not ready to go. And it just seemed so out of body. So when I look at it like that, we have a shooter. It's 2024. So we have ways of tracking people. I have, you know, receipts. You can set your watch by somebody and know their location. So to have confusion already with this shooter is already a problem for me as he's being a young white man. Um, we don't really know the situation with that, which to me causes more anxiety Mm -hmm. because the ambiguity of it all, if it was truly not a setup and it wasn't coerced, and I don't think it was a setup by Trump himself. I don't think Trump sat there and said, yeah, you know, this sounds good. You know, don't, don't get my two pages, get the ear a little bit and, you know, go up to the South side and, you know, we're going to leave the ladder. I don't think he knew anything about that, Mm -hmm. but I think he was, I think he was already comfortable assuming risk and danger. And that's all you kind of needed. Um, he was fine already doing some wild shit January 6th. And he did not care about cops being murdered. He didn't care about people being murdered, women, children. He said, y'all walk on over there, go on down the street. And, and I'm going to be right behind y'all. Maybe, but you know, don't look behind, but just keep going. And the people did it. And nothing has ever really come of that to to me seems like a real change it that seemed like a a weird coup de gras maybe but not really uh rosie can you unmute your microphone yes i'm here uh hey everyone and lovely t i just want to say hey girl um I've been following you. It's so surreal. I can't believe I'm talking to you. I've been following you since 2015. I just, I think you showed up in my recommendations and been following you ever since. And I just love your commentary. And I like how you're very unbiased. You, you really just come from all points of views. Um, but thank you for hosting this chat. And I just want to say a few things and I'm going to try and be quick. Okay. Um, just listening to the past few people talk. I want to make myself clear here. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't give a damn about a project 2025. I am a foundational black American, American descendant of slavery, black American. Damn near every black person know about the project. Every second you live, breathe, there's an agenda and a project being going on. Slavery was a project. Jim Crow was a project. The black code, gerrymandering, mass incarceration, the crack epidemic. That was a goddamn project. So I'm getting sick of people with this fear migraine. Project 2025. Okay. What about 2030, 2050? A fuck a project. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.